some of the misinformation has been extraordinary. And you even see, uh, this is why I guess I was a bit concerned and I didn't want to go rushing uh, straight into this without, because I don't know anything about science. Uh, but, you know, like Snopes, I don't know if you know Snopes, they're one of, yeah, one of the, the websites of, uh, uh, they, they debunk conspiracy and myth and all of that. And they took the complete opposite side to what, to what you're saying. This, this is a female person. But even within that, I can see, without being a scientist and without having the scientific background, I can see ideological footprints within what they wrote because they wrote about, uh, always has identified as, as a woman and their passport is a woman, as if that has anything to do with reality and, mm -hmm. and science and biology. But uh, I mean, some of the things I've, I've been hearing, what, what do they even mean? I, so, so in one of these articles, but it was written that between five and 10% of women have hyperandrogenism, which is a key symptom of polycystic ovarian syndrome. What does that mean? Yeah, so uh, polycystic ovary syndrome, so PCOS, is something that affects a lot of women. Okay, and it's basically your ovaries start to make cysts. And you can have some quite elevated testosterone in association mm. with, with having that um, medical condition. And that elevated testosterone, you know, we just touched on whether a, a woman would know that she's becoming a bit masculinized. In mm. terms of PCOS, we're talking about maybe, uh, you know, a woman will experience kind of menstrual disruption and, and fertility issues, but also maybe, let's say, to characterize it, a slightly hairier lip or something mm. like that. You know, something that starts to uh, trigger that they've got a hormonal imbalance. When we think about the actual testosterone levels of women with PCOS, they are elevated, but the normal testosterone distributions of males and females are really very separate. Okay, some people have tried to obfus obfuscate that, including the IOC, by saying men and women overlap in terms of their testosterone distribution. But the only way, or not the only way, you, when you look at athlete profiles, yes, you see some athletes who are registered as male with really remarkably low testosterone, within the female range. And yes, you see some athletes who are registered as female with very high testosterone within the male range. But once you control for the effects of doping on males, males who dope and take anabolic steroids, when they stop doing that, because they're starting to come into competition season, their body has been suppressed from making natural testosterone because they've been chucking loads of it in. Okay, so there's a, a, a refractory period where they've really got quite low testosterone before their body catches up. They're not getting this outside supply anymore. I need to start making it again. Okay, once you get rid of those, you don't have males in the female range. And when you look at the other end, the, the females with high testosterone, they're almost exclusively males with DSDs. Right. So they're in the female category, but their physiology is male. So once you control for that, you get a very strong statistically significant split between male and female testosterone. Women with PCOS are well within the female range. They're slightly towards the higher end of the female range, but they're not they're not in the male range. <laughs> I see. Yeah. So what I guess what you're saying is that it, it is quite an extraordinary I mean, let me know if you're not saying this, but it is quite an extraordinary difference. It is a leap from women to men. It's because I think we're led to believe again, I'm going back to the gender issue. I mean that's what a lot of uh, people watching are, have been interested in. That's why this is such a, a buzz topic, apart from the fact that this is violence of men on women, of course, as well. Um, but there, there's always this impression of like, hey, they're all a spectrum and it's so close anyway. And all you do is take a few hormones and then you really are that other thing. And I, I guess what you're saying is that's just utterly not the case. Yeah. I, I, and I think that it's that's not lack of education. I think that's deliberate misinformation. I mm. think that's that's the ideology of trying to pretend in order to, you know, validate gender identity as the primary, I don't know, human mm. characteristic by which we might divide ourselves. That's an attempt to undermine the reality of sex. And we've seen this now on social media. I've seen it in the mainstream media. Uh, an endocrinologist today describing um, Khalif as absolutely biologically a woman and even when we consider what that might mean you know and I've got nothing to say about Khalif's social identity or or even uh, legal identity but it's very difficult for me to hear an endocrinologist who 
is thinking about things like testes and testosterone and prostates and to, to say yeah. that someone with those features internally is absolutely a woman. I mean, we have to admit that there's at least some ambiguity there, right? In, yeah. in these types of cases. But this is all feeding into the idea that there should not be sex-based protections, right? So I don't really, you know, we can talk about maybe what some of those are. They extend beyond sport, certainly. We don't want those things to happen. So we're going to pretend that male and female don't exist. And we've seen this concerted effort for several years now in the scientific media, certainly in the scientific popular media, like Scientific American and those kinds of periodicals to really fool everyone into what we've known <laughs> and what we know is an you know evolutionary kind of natural history to our species to all mammals to nearly all animals to plants right this is part of the very fact of life on earth that there are two sexes and suddenly people are saying in this very postmodern environment mm -hmm. oh actually we're not sure there are I mean I it's ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. We don't have to pretend there's no difference between male and female to understand sometimes some people need protections. Sometimes we might be able to respect a gender identity and accommodate it in certain circumstances. We don't need to pretend very basic facts about life are in fact in fact not very basic facts. Do you ever feel a pressure um not to say the controversial thing have you ever felt that pressure from outside to sort of go along with certain aspects of gender identity or, or any of that no not at all okay you won't get in trouble or fired or anything well i mean i've had you know complaints to my institute about some of the things that i've said i've been you know i'm a biologist i i'm not a humanities scholar i'm not a gender studies scholar or anything like this mm. i've always been quite clear my my entire public persona is sex and sport it's the biology of sex and it's how that's related to sporting categories and to some extent i think i felt fairly confident when i started reading about this and researching about this that not only was i quite or you know expert in at least one of these domains to be able to understand the science but also as a scientist slightly protected from all of this humanities postmodern stuff going on over there right mm -hmm. i'm a scientist i can make scientific statements that are backed up by fact and i would be untouchable and actually i think there has been a slight creep. So now I am being told that even just saying words like male and female is de facto transphobic. Who's telling uh, you that? Just, well, people on social media, people that write to my institute to ask that I be sacked, suspended. Is that happening? Yes, it is happening. And I've been, you know, there was a, there was a case a while ago of a, a, a male athlete who identified as a woman and wanted to be in the female category. And off the back of that, this athlete's mother reported me to the police for a hate crime incident wow. and then told my institute that I was under investigation with the police for a hate crime incident. And my institute very kindly informed me of this. They said, there's not, you know, we can't really do anything about this. This is happening, but you should you know, you deserve to know this. My institute have been really good. Okay. They have, as far as I can tell, checked my Twitter feed. I'm mostly active on Twitter. I don't use any other social media. Um, but, you know, I've published in reputable journals about this now. I think I'm polite. I don't think I put punches. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be deliberately provocative or enter into what might be a culture war. I've tried very clearly to stay quite calm. Culture war seeks you out, though. Well, and it does, <laughs> and and you, I I try not to get pulled into, you know, talking about what someone looks like on a photo or what no, those kinds neither. of things. It's I. It's not. It's well, not, not my not personality it, as well as it's not really what I'm. Not fighting. only is it is it bullying, I think, um, to to do that to focus on the looks of an individual, but I think it also. I think it plays into the myth on the other side, which is that if somebody passes well enough on the outside, it's it's almost like saying, oh, you look how ridiculous you look. You look like a bloke. You can't possibly be a woman. Then if someone does look like a woman, and we know that's happened, do you remember that show something about Miriam? 
No, I don't. That was a. I don't watch much TV. Sorry. It was like 20, it was twenty years ago, twenty five, <laughs> okay. but it stayed in my brain because it was just scary for me as a child to watch because it was this reality show uh, on an island. You know, one of these loved ones. Oh, uh, I do. I've yeah. heard a synopsis of it, but sorry. Oh my I... gosh! And they, uh, <laughs> there's like ten guys have got to win over the woman. And it's this extremely beautiful looking woman um, and they fight for her and they cry over her and all of this stuff. And right at the end, someone finally like wins her, whatever that means in these kinds of shows. And she reveals that she's a, a man and it's it's a guy. The, 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 the contestants sued, I think successfully afterwards, because obviously they've been misled and it's not a very nice thing to do to someone. I mean, it's, it's I, I don't know if it's essentially... Is it? Is it? Is that, would that be a version of sexual assault or rape? Or? Yeah, I, I don't know what you would call it, yeah. but I think... I remember thinking when I learned about this program, like I say, I haven't watched it, but that this is this is just outright explo exploitation of both yeah. parties, oh, right? For for the the vultures out there who just want to be titillated yeah. by, you know, oh look, that's a that's a man who thinks he's a woman or whatever, you know, they might say, and then the the men who. Oh, in whatever level of seriousness it existed, thought that they were going there to, like you say, win a woman and then finding out that they were kind of lied to about that. Mm -hmm. And actually that is important for people that, you know, they have kind of consent and non-deception when they're choosing partners or choosing yeah. who they want to go home with from a nightclub or whatever. Absolutely. You know, so I think it does reveal something quite important. But again, just this idea that here is someone that is being exploited this time deliberately by a TV company and who I think um, committed suicide. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, actually. I, I'll I, have to look into I that. I believe the person committed suicide. A lot of people from reality shows did. This was the Wild West period of reality yeah, shows, wasn't it? Yeah, anything goes kind of thing. Oh, it was, yeah. Um, I'll have to look that up. Um, obviously, it comes from something about Mary. That was where the something about Miriam uh, came uh, from. <laughs> but, I mean, the, the point being, this was, this was somebody who passed well enough at being a... A woman, and so what does that mean that they then are a woman? If we're going to use that argument of people who don't look like who look bad, I just think it's a bad place to go. And I, I, I yeah, I don't like that whole. And this thing. it's so completely unnecessary in sport because, like I say, I I support sex verification. I support screening. Mm. I support it early before we get this far. And so it's completely unnecessary to start engaging with how people look. Yeah, because. We just don't need to be operating on that personal level. We can kind of keep it yeah. de-individualized, private, and, you know, behind the scenes before the athlete gets out there for people to point and say, well, look, of course, they're a man. I guess one of the issues is, I guess if I want to give the benefit of the doubt to the other side, just a devil's advocate it, for people who do say, look what you look like kind of thing. Uh, more and more people that I speak to about the trans thing seem to say that so much of it is about looking it's looks and looking like a beautiful woman and being perceived as one and photos taken thousands of them to get the right angle and say, look, you see, look what I am. And those people might be very aggressive, say, to someone like Graham Linehan, who would then be like, come on, mate, you know. So I can understand where that where that comes from um, as well. Can, can a trans person ever start to... And by the way, I just checked that um, something about Miriam, she yeah, was found, was found dead in, in 2019. Okay. Um, so I think you've got that probably right. 